Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, cats and dogs of all ages, and welcome to Festipal Meets. And this is episode number 11. And who am I meeting today, I hear you say? Well, I'm meeting a lady born originally in Germany, now living in the Canary Islands, living up the large sun life. She releases songs that are so perfect that the word perfection actually was delved into the unique music that she produces. And she also wrote a song for Coventry. What more do you need than that? It is a lady who comes from a family of musicians who all sound as perfect as each other. It is the wonderful, the fantastic, the superbly unique Luna Keller. Hello, Luna. <laughs> Hello. What an introduction. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. Thank you. How's, how's your uh, Christmas and New Year's been? I've not really spoken since then, have we? Well, it has been normal because since I live like thousands of kilometers away from my family, I've always been celebrating it only with my parents here in Tenerife. Yeah. So we did, weren't affected by the restrictions because it was literally the three of us. Yeah. <laughs> so that was fine. We could kind of do everything like we usually do. The only thing I really missed is we have this amazing concert where usually there are like 35,000 people singing Christmas songs together. That didn't happen. And that's mm -hmm. like my favorite Christmas thing. And also here, we don't get our presents on Christmas. Um, oh. We get our presents on the 6th of January and the three kings bring them. And oh. I've been volunteering at the parade because there's a parade for town of the three kings. So I've yeah. been volunteering there every single year. And that didn't happen either. So those were like two things I missed a little bit. But like in general, it was it was pretty normal and yeah, quite yeah. nice. Um, now, I've got to ask, I know it's about Christmas, we've passed Christmas, but is there a mm -hmm. tradition in Germany that there's a program that's always on at Christmas and Christmas Day about a butler who, who, uh, who yeah, brings... Yeah, you, you who, mean dinner for one? That's the one. Is but that, I think it... it's more New Year's, but I'm not sure. Maybe ah, I'm wrong. I, but I, yeah. I yeah. watched it this Christmas, actually, for the first time. And it's hilarious. The same thing as every year, Miss Sophie. The same thing as <laughs> every year. The same procedure as every year. That's so, Yeah, it's, it's hilarious. It's a great one. And there's loads of versions. Like every German dialect will have a comedian from that area from Germany made it, like, that's made a version of it. And it's really, really funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If anybody ever gets the chance, a dinner for one, it's a, it's a butler literally bringing drink and food for um, uh, the lady of the house and he just get more and drunk. Uh, and more drunk and more drunk yeah because <laughs> everyone else that would have been at the table is not with the living anymore so he yeah. impersonates all of them and drinks all of their drinks and it's really <laughs> funny <laughs> um yeah absolute joy to watch i think it's about 20 minutes or 30 minutes long anyway mm -hmm. um back to you luna um what i think would be fantastic is if we get to hear what you're made of when it comes to your music well, does that mean you want me to play a song for you right now in this You don't moment? want to be a first over Zoom for me, so yeah, it'd be amazing. I really hope the sound is okay, but, but let's try. Let's um, give it a go. Okay, since I casually have my guitar in my arms for some reason, let's start. <laughs> um, it's called Let Me Go Now. You probably know it. It's been released last year. It's one of mm -hmm. the songs of the album I'm working on, and it's, it's a little heartbreak song, but, oh. but it's nice. It's, it's a beautiful one, regardless. Up to you. I just kissed your lips and they weren't those I miss They weren't even yours The blue in your eyes used to keep me mesmerized But they don't shine anymore We used to light a fire with the spark of our desire Where did that spark go? When we danced, others watched When we kissed, time stopped But time goes so slow now Oh, let me go now I'm not afraid of falling down Down, down We should go now Before our fires burn Out, out, out Tired of building love that no one understands The Congos of the past I'm saying I love you babe But it just doesn't sound the same For our love didn't last 
We used to light a fire with the spark of our desire. Where did that spark go? When we danced, tell us watched. When we kissed, time stopped. But time goes so slow. Oh, let me go now. I'm not afraid of falling down, down, down. We should go now before our fires burn. Out, out, and out. It's time to go. For we don't exist anymore. So go. Before a memory dies, no. Worthless nights, worthless nights. Oh, let me go now. I'm not afraid of falling down, down, down. We should go now before our fires burn down, out, out. Oh, let me go now. I'm not afraid of falling down. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> it, it's uh, it sounds amazing over Zoom, might I add? Um, got a few oh. little, yeah. I mean, a few little grim bots coming in now and again just to s slow things down. But hey, hey, it's Zoom. It's live. Yes. What can we do? It's, it's the age of technology. We have to sacrifice a little bit of quality on the way. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And here I am in the UK, and the snow's falling. Meanwhile, you're over there in Tenerife, and is there any snow over there? Well, on top of the Teide, which is the mountain here, it's it's like 3,800 meters tall, mm -hmm. like it's really tall. Um, it's got some snow. It snowed a little bit because we had some rainy days uh, last week. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, but it's not much and it didn't get to any region where anyone's living. So it didn't really affect us at all. And right. the last three days were just sunshine and blue skies. So well, I we think we're... We had sunshine that. and blue skies yesterday, but it was like minus one. So there's a, probably a difference. <laughs> I'm just getting cold from hearing you say that. We never have that here. Like, never. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, Luna, now let's take a little travel through your journey and through your life. And let's let's begin from the day dot. Uh, where were you born and, and brought up? Where and, and where did you spend your childhood? Well, it's two different places because I was born in Germany, in Dieburg, which I've only been two times, once when I was born and once when we drove past it. And my mom said, you see that ugly building over there? That's the hospital where you were born. <laughs> so apart from that, I, I really haven't been there at all because when I was six months old, my parents moved to Tenerife, basically yeah. because of the weather, because the weather in Germany isn't as nice. Um, they actually had that planned before they even knew that I was coming into their lives. So it was okay. like a little surprise passenger. <laughs> And they moved here. So I grew up here and I was kind of growing up with both languages. So I was speaking German at home and just from kindergarten, really, really early speaking Spanish, yeah. um, which is a huge privilege. I think it's really, really been a great help, not only traveling, but also learning more languages like English, just already having that. And yeah, I just grew up here in a little town close to the mountain. I learned some English. I spent some time in Ireland with a scholarship when I was 15. And that kind of kicked off the folk music for me, um, like a definite path. And yeah. I think that's more or less me. Well, my parents are both very musical. So I did grow up with going to the choir and my parents making music. So that's mm -hmm. very important too. And I guess there's probably a lot to say that I'm not saying, but you get the idea. <laughs> we, we, we just, yeah, yeah. Uh, so what did your mom and dad do then before they, they before you blossomed into who you are? Uh, I mean, they, I'm guessing they were musicians, but what were their jobs before they came over to Tenerife? Well, they're not professional musicians, actually. Um, mm -hmm. They've always been, it's always been a big part of their lives. My mom was singing in choirs since she was small, and my dad was in bands since he was a teenager, too. So yeah. 
it wasn't really my dad did have a job that was related to the music industry because he was in um, music distribution mm -hmm. so bringing the instruments around and traveling a lot to the usa too Amazing. so he was doing that and my mom was in a marketing agency for a long time and then they kind of discovered um chinese astrology and the five elements and health and cooking and nutritionism and all of that and my mom kind of went into that and she's now a cookbook author and she does like classes and seminars and loads of stuff with that mm -hmm. which is super interesting and my dad and her have that company together so they kind of build that up together um, and that's what they're doing now so they kind of transitioned but their original skills are very useful for me right now because my mom <laughs> is amazing at marketing and my dad knows everything about studios and instruments so it's like the perfect place to start being a musician <laughs> it's perfection isn't it like you said at the start mm. perfection um perfection. and, and uh, a little bit of selling what, what's your mom's full name for her books now for cookery books um it's daniela herzberg um, many of them, I think almost all of them are in German though, but she wants to do something translating. So, so yeah, definitely. I mean, I've been eating her food for all my life and it's amazing. So 100% recommend it. <laughs> um, so can you, so for instance, can you sing a song in English, German and Spanish? Can I? I can. Yeah. Do can I? sell them <laughs> um i i've i've just discovered that i feel very comfortable in english yeah. i have written songs in spanish i could mm -hmm. play one if you want um but the german songs are more a necessity so how can i describe this accurately um just it's sort of when i have to say something to someone that doesn't speak english then i write yeah. a german song like it's yeah. a song I wrote for my grandparents or for my cousin or for a wedding of a friend, you know, like it's more like specific personal things. But when I write about myself and in the end, those are the songs that make it onto my projects that kind of tell my journey and what I learn and the stories that I find fascinating. Mm -hmm. I mostly end up falling into English and same with Spanish. Yeah. Like the only songs that I have in Spanish are almost all protest songs that I wrote for local protests and events for fighting for for the forests and for the ocean and all of that so <laughs> so yeah most of my songs are in english but can i play in, in the other languages and write yes I, I can yeah so if i said to you um i would like about 40 seconds of a german song 40 seconds of a spanish song put them both together do you think you could oh do it? you're challenging me mm -hmm. i okay. don't think i remember a single german song right now <laughs> Um, I, I don't think I could do it. I could if you gave me like 10 minutes of preparation, which I don't think we have right now. But, but, but you can do it in yeah. 10 minutes. <laughs> hmm? You can do it in 10 minutes time. Yeah, but we'll be talking right now, right? Of course, so of course. I, I don't have time to prepare. <laughs> it would it would probably be hilarious. I, I can I can play you a little bit of a Spanish song I wrote if you want to. Yeah, but, I think that'd be nice. But I, I don't think I'm up for, for composing at this time <laughs> of the day. <laughs> I, I tell you what, why don't you announce the song in German and then sing it in Spanish? If it makes you happy, I will. <laughs> <laughs> but no one will know what it's about. <laughs> okay. Um, do you want me to play the full song or just like a part of it? We'll just play a part of it. Yeah. Okay. Um, let me just remember the chords. <laughs> okay, fine. Um, I'll announce it in German so you will have no idea what's going on. Okay. Um, der nächste Song heißt Sauerstoff und er handelt davon, dass wir unseren Planeten kaputt machen, was nicht so gut ist und wir sollten besser auf ihn aufpassen. Is that clear? Yeah? Yeah, definitely. Ich ja noch puedo respirar, lo que tocamos muero, se destruye y no parece importar. Oxígeno, dame esperanza de que juntos nos podemos salvar. A little bit, that was a chorus. <laughs> you know what, it, it doesn't matter what language you sing in, you still sound amazing. You got, you oh, got one of those... You. I mean, there's a few people I know who have fallen in love with your music uh, by, by seeing your live videos and, and your voice. So, you know, when the world allows us, we'll 
will literally drag you over here and say, right, you're <laughs> performing over here. Um, <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. I actually have, it's on my bucket list to play a little tour through the UK. Even oh. if it's just house concerts and small venues, I have quite a lot of amazing friends and people I know like you um, yeah. the, that I would love to, to meet in person and to make some music with and for. So yeah. once this is over, I will, I will take a plane and I will be there. <laughs> To take a plane, just go run onto the airport, that's mine, and then boom, over. To take a plane. First thing, first thing, when they ease the lockdown, I'll just, you know, I put down my sports clothes, my guitar on my back, and then I'll just sprint to England. I don't even need a plane, I'm going to run so fast, the ocean will carry me there. No, it, it that's, that's an exaggeration. <laughs> yes, it's, it's going to split, it's going to be biblical, it's going to go down in history. Um, be all, people go, oh, um. <laughs> the <little> angels singing. <laughs> <laughs> that would be hilarious it would be a really good marketing stunt now that i think about it <laughs> yeah yeah i think so definitely <laughs> um because we we met uh by chance really because i uh, i i did a group called the festival from home which is still you know open for people to put their music in and, and you joined and shared some of your music mm. and you were playing with your mum and dad and i thought i was like wow i said i've got to get you know, I don't have anybody from, at the time, which I thought was Spain at the time, I said, I don't have anybody from Spain to join me on, on a festival that I was putting together. Um, I think you mm -hmm. did two. You did the 24-hour one and a 12-hour yeah. one. Yeah. Um, mm, and it's really, really cool. I really enjoyed it. I met so many amazing musicians. Some of them actually became friends. And I yeah. even met one in person when I was in Switzerland. It was just <laughs> so, so cool to be a part of that. It's so cool that you organized that. And thank you so much for inviting us on. But to be honest, so that was the idea of the world connecting and then people meeting people, the off chance that they get. And like I said, you, you got the chance. Uh, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, let's take a little backtrack, though. Um, back to when you, you, you back into your childhood. When did you start? Obviously, your parents were very much into music. But when did you start becoming the singer and songwriter that, that you are today? Well, I mean, I did start singing in the choir with my mom when I was like eight. And it's really funny because there is no kids choir here. So I was in the adult choir and you would see everyone standing there and then just this little blonde head in the soprano section. <laughs> it would be quite funny. But yeah, I, I did start singing there, but it was not like I was passionate or songwriting at that moment. I was just yeah. like, hey, this is cool. These are nice people and I like singing. So let's do this. Um, and then my parents, they were playing some songs. They did like a little thing where they were playing covers together. My dad on the guitar, my mom was singing and mm -hmm. they played at little events and stuff. And there was a certain point where I would practice a couple of songs with them and like join them and sing some backing vocals. And I kind of started dabbling in instruments. I started playing the bass. I wasn't patient enough. I stopped. I started playing the piano. I wasn't patient enough. I stopped. I started <laughs> playing the guitar. I wasn't patient enough. I stopped. I started playing the bass again. And then I realized I can't write song on, on the bass. That was the moment where I was like, oh, I like songwriting. And then I found my way back to the guitar. It was actually pretty late. It was like 13, 14 years. I was, mm -hmm. was my age. And that was the moment where I started writing. And before there, I had been writing poetry and songs, but it was the moment where it clicked, where I was like, okay, the thing that I'm passionate about is creating stuff. Yeah. I'm not a passionate, you know, virtuoso on the guitar. I'm passionate about telling stories. I'm passionate about writing these songs and sharing these stories with other people. And that slowly developed there. So probably around 14 was when I started writing. And it took me a couple of years to realize, okay, this is what I'm supposed to be doing with my life because I absolutely love it. Yeah, yeah. And and when you perform, you can see you look, that you love it. Um, uh, and again, like I said, I've seen you perform with your mom and dad and they love it as well. They're swaying on the, oh, yeah. on the chairs. We're so it's lucky to to have each other to make music with. Yeah, yeah. Um, do, you, do you have brothers or sisters, or is it just yourself? I I do have, but only from my father's side. So mm -hmm. when I was born, my sister was actually already seventeen. So okay. there was a, a yeah. huge, huge gap. I was I was a surprise, uh, a little a little shock for my dad at the time, but I think he's <laughs> happy now. Um, but yeah, so I have a sister and a brother that are both older than me. But when my parents moved away, they stayed in Germany because they were yeah. practically adults and they had their mother there. So I never grew up in the same house with them, but I do have a friendship with them and a nice connection with them. And I really appreciate yeah. them. And do you get the chance to go over and see them uh, when the world is correct? Yeah, I mean, I since I was, I think, seven, I went to Germany pretty much every year, every summer. Mm. I would go to my grandparents and then I would also visit my siblings and the whole family. 
and I usually spend several weeks there. So I did kind of get the German culture and the connection to my family, even though I lived quite far away. And yeah. it's still the same. And now I'm going to be moving to Germany. So mm -hmm. I'm going to be with them even more often, which I'm looking forward to. I will miss my parents, though. Of course, of course you will. But hey, they're just a short flight away, I'm sure. Well, a four and a half hour flight. Very short. Was it? Oh, OK. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on the wind, depending on the wind. Might yeah, be a little, yeah. a little bit less, a little bit more. But then again, if the oceans open up for you, you can just, you know, just yeah, wander I can just over. Walk. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I really need to work on that, don't I? Yeah, I think you need to. Yeah, mm. yeah. I can hear the <laughs> angels now. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, so when you come to you, you sing a songwriter, what was the first song you wrote? Can you remember? <laughs> Oh, I can play that one, and it is in German. Ah. Um, it's actually called I Can Play E Minor, but mm -hmm. in German. So okay. it was I Can Play E Minor, E Minor is amazing. So basically they went, Ich kann immer, immer ist toll. Ich kann immer, immer ist toll. Ich kann ein A, das kann ich klar. Ich kann immer. So it was basically just playing all the chords that I could play and saying that they were amazing. It was incredibly <laughs> stupid, but very fun. And it's still a running gag up to this yeah. day. So yeah, that, that was my first song. It was really bad, but you know, we all start somewhere. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I mean, I wrote poetry, and but I don't write songs, but it's nice to see how many musicians wrote poetry before they started becoming singer-songwriters as yeah, well. Yeah, I did too, yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, so, when did you start writing music in English? Because you said you went over to Ireland. Is this where, I mean, how old were you then when you went to Ireland? Um, when I went to Ireland, I think I was 15, 15, 15. 16, yeah, some, somewhere around that. I just feel like since 2020 has passed, I completely <laughs> lost the ability to track time. It's, I don't know why, it's just, it's erased my, my perception of time. It was a long Maybe, year, wasn't it? Yeah, it, it, it felt like many years in one. <laughs> But yes, I think I was 15. I think that, 15. that's about right. And, yeah. and, and how was you uh, when it came to speaking English uh, when you got to Ireland? I was kind of lucky because my parents realized that schools here are really bad at teaching English because they mm -hmm. are. Like mm -hmm. everyone has English for over 10 years and no one speaks English. So it's like just really bad. Um, so they actually got me into extra lessons in the in the afternoons after school. So I got some some better English. And I also... I had some friends because people come here from England sometimes and many have apartments here. There's almost a little English colony in Los Gigantes. There are more English people there than Spanish people. And my parents play tennis there and I used to be there a lot. And I actually made friends with many people, but especially with, with a really good friend. We're still friends with Olivia. And she was she had a good Spanish, but we kind of didn't communicate in Spanish, more in English. So talking to her... Mm -hmm. And having those extra lessons had given me a pretty good, like, basic understanding of English. But yeah. when I arrived in Ireland, I was in this very little town. Uh, well, it's not small, small, but, you know, it's not, it's not a big city. And I just remember arriving, lovely people. It was an amazing experience. But I remember arriving the first day and the house of my, I was with a host family. It was filled with people. And they were speaking really quickly with a very strong Irish accent. And I was just thinking, this isn't English. How am I supposed to understand this? I was so lost. So it did take me take me a while mm. to understand all those words like going for a nosy. What does that mean? You know, it's it's walking around town, but I didn't know that. <laughs> that's, the, that's the thing, isn't it? You've got to learn as many slang words. It's, it's easy learning the, the, the words to another dialect, but, but learning the um, sorry, the languages, but learning the slang mm. words. That's I'd imagine that's really difficult as well it takes its time but mm -hmm. the result was after three and a half months i came back home mm -hmm. and my parents barely understood me so <laughs> i had completely adapted all of the slang and i had a pretty strong irish accent that i've been slowly losing since then but i feel like yeah. there's still some little hint of it once in a while when i talk little, little twang in there yeah yeah um so you you know english you know spanish you know german do you know any other languages are you Ah, uh, je parle un petit peu de français. A little I bit speak of a little bit of French, yeah. See, but that's... not that well. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, you're, you're like the female version of Dave Grohl from Foo Fighters because he goes to other countries and sings one song 
in that language of that of that country, which I find that's really cool. I didn't know amazing. that. Yeah, and it must... yeah, I would love that actually. Mm. I should do that. Yeah, I mean, how do they? And... How does he? I think it's best of me. I think, and I'm, I think, how does he sing that in J Japanese, for instance, when he's over there? <laughs> then... Oh, I'm sure Japanese people will will find it funny though. <laughs> he he must make some kind of mistake in there. But that's the thing, you can't take yourself too seriously as an artist. Yeah. Like when I play live, I do loads of silly things. I mean, you know, you've seen the live streams. I play the air trumpet, which I can't really play at all. And I do a lot of stupid things. And that those are the things that people remember. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. something like that is great. And I always, when I play somewhere, I will learn enough words to introduce myself and my music in the language yeah. of that place because it's respectful. And yeah. I will also learn how to order food because it's necessary. Mm -hmm. See, there's, there's British people who are quite lazy when it comes to languages. So, you know, we just think, well, it's, it's the English vocabulary or nothing. So we're, we're quite lazy, to be honest. Um, yeah. Now, when it came to your very first stage performance, I'm, I'm guessing without your parents, how did you feel? Were you really nervous or were you confident or... How was it? Well, it was, you know, I, I was used to stages because I had been on stages with the choir. I've been mm -hmm. on stages with my parents and I'd done theater before. Yes. And the very first time I played an original song on a stage, I, this might not even be the first time, first time, but it was the first time I clearly remember. And mm -hmm. that sort of felt big. There was this competition where people from all over the island were writing songs, poetry, and making art from different schools about this local painter. Mm -hmm. And I wrote a song about one of his paintings. It was a Spanish song. It was called Cae la Lluvia, The Rain Falls, because that was the title of the painting. And I had recorded it. And the idea was we were in this big old theater with like the balconies and all of that. The yeah. idea was they were going to play the song, the recording, and that mm -hmm. was it. So the recording didn't work. <laughs> and Crazy Me said, OK, Hey, there was a band there, a pretty well-known band. So I walked up to the singer of the pretty well-known band and said, can I borrow your guitar? Because I was not going to let my song, not, like <laughs> they had to hear it. It was, you know, I was so proud. So I actually took the guitar. I hadn't practiced the song. I kind of forgot half of the chords while playing it. But the cool thing was I stood on that stage filled with people. I played that song and the band of that very famous singer joined in while I was playing because they saw I was a little bit lost. So suddenly there were drums, there was a bassist and the famous singer, like not famous, but you know, locally famous, yeah. was singing backing vocals and people were putting their phones on and I was standing there, my legs were shaking. <laughs> I, I went off stage, I was like, oh my God, this was terrible, I was terrible. I mean, it was amazing, but I was terrible. <laughs> and my best friend came up to me and said, that just was the best moment of the whole day. Oh. And I will never forget it because it was the first time I played an original song. It was an mm. absolute disaster and people still loved it. So yeah. that basically sums up being a musician very often. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, how big was the audience that were there? Can you remember? Uh, how many people go into that theater? Several hundred for sure. Mm. Mm. Um, I don't think it's it's over. No, it's not a thousand. It's less than a thousand, but it's still, several still hundred. Big. Still more than 12, mm. isn't it? So, um, Absolutely. That's one way to put yourself on the stage, isn't it? I suppose. Go big. I, like, I don't know what went through my mind when I decided mm. I'm just going to go up there and play a song I haven't rehearsed and that I barely remember the chords with in front of all of these people. Yeah. Um, but I do have that sometimes and often it has brought me the best moments of my life when mm -hmm. I just like brush away my my doubts and I'm like I'm just gonna do this now let's just go for it no matter what happens and often what happens is amazing we just need to take a big old step out of our comfort zone and it's really yeah. worth it I always say that step uh, step out of your comfort zone I always say the mm -hmm. same um so how old were you at this point can you remember Ooh, that was before Ireland because it was in that school so maybe it was when I just started, so maybe like also like 14 or 13, like really when I was just starting to write songs. It was pretty yeah. much in that transition between writing poetry and writing songs, because I was yeah. writing poetry since I was about 12 already. That was pretty early in there. It wasn't good. Mm -hmm. I, I won a competition, but I don't know how I did, because it wasn't really good. Um, <laughs> but, but I that, enjoyed it. That so, might be you saying it wasn't very good, and it was probably perfect. You know, perfect is a word that I never use. 
<laughs> like honestly, I feel like perfection is the enemy of art. Because the art or the thing that reaches us and the thing that moves us and the things that makes us dance out and that makes things relatable at all are those little flaws, mm. are those little imperfections. Like when I hear a recording of a singer and their voice broke a little bit because they were mm -hmm. just about to cry when they sung that song, I don't see that as an imperfection. I see that as heartbreaking and I will probably start crying with them. Yeah. And I feel like art is not about perfection. Art mm -hmm. is about emotion. And emotion yeah. has never been perfect. So I, I don't really strive for perfection. <laughs> I don't know if that makes any sense, but yeah. I'll edit all the perfect words out then. <laughs> nah, you don't have to. They're still kind of flattering, but. <laughs> um, so, I mean, when I first met you, you you'd um, you unleashed a fantastic song that I absolutely fell in love with and played on the radio <laughs> the first moment I had the chance, and that was Midnight Queen. Um, we've jumped ahead here a little bit, um, but Midnight Queen is a song that kind of introduced me to you. Um, uh, mm -hmm. Although you sent me another song, um, I'll, I'll Bring You Home, I believe it was called. Yeah. Working on memory there. Um, and two, two amazing songs, absolutely amazing songs. And I thought straight Thank away, you. I've got to keep in touch with Luna because your writing skills, your lyrical work and your masterful play is is. Another word for perfect. Um, superb. <laughs> <laughs> Thank um, you. <laughs> uh, so I, I said to you, I, I was talking to a lady who was part of a of a Facebook group called Sitting Room of Culture, and we're talking mm. about elephants. Now, you and I on the radio just chatted about elephants, and within a week, you wrote a song. That I, I said, would you would you, you know, do this song for Coventry and the elephants? And uh, me and my elephant, you went and wrote it, and... Next minute, you were talking on the BBC over here in, in the UK yeah. about that. That was song. crazy. Yeah. That yeah, happens. it's one of my favorite stories to tell. It's just like, you know, I, you know how I, how I got on the BBC for the very first time? I wrote a song about an elephant that turned, a sofa that turns into an elephant. It's so bizarre. <laughs> I've still got it now. I've still got it now. Um, but yeah, I love that. I absolutely adored that. But, but your music, if you, I think I, I kind of, mentioned the um, uh, first aid kit you know first mm -hmm. aid kit and I, I kind of said that you're very much like first aid kit but I always I don't think I should say that because that's kind of taken away you as a performer if that makes any sense no I, I feel like they are absolutely amazing so mm. when you introduced me to them I listened to I think Stay Gold is the album yeah, yeah. Um, and since then I've become a fan of them like yeah. it's your fault I absolutely <laughs> love them now um, they've actually released um, new music recently didn't they but yeah. anyway what was I going to say um, I don't think it's bad to be compared to other artists because um, mm -hmm. you know nothing is completely new and mm -hmm. we're all going to sound a little bit like someone once in a while mm -hmm. and it's actually really good to know who you sound like to find your audience as an artist yeah, so yeah. it's always really helpful to know, hey, you know, for example, I'll bring you home was compared uh, to Monsters and Man quite often. So okay. which is another pretty cool band. Um, mm. So I just kind of know I know that I'll be like, oh, I sound like this. So when I have to approach a venue I can be like, oh, hey, I sound like this. When I have to pitch my music to someone, you know, oh, I saw your playlist. It's got this song by First Aid Kid on it. I've released a song I've been actually compared to them by yeah. many people and I think it could be a great fit. So yeah. marketing wise, it's really useful too. Yeah. So yeah. I don't think it's it's a bad thing no. to be compared. That's good though. I like that. <laughs> I don't feel as bad now though. <laughs> um, I shouldn't feel bad ever. <laughs> so what was your very first single that you released and how did it do? It was called Sunset. Mm -hmm. and it did it existed <laughs> um the thing is when we started recording and releasing my music i wasn't seeing it as a full-time thing yet i was yeah. still in school mm -hmm. so we actually started just when i came back from ireland um so for me we didn't do much marketing for the first couple of songs mm -hmm. and we didn't know much about marketing and I didn't really have much time, you know, doing music, marketing, lives and all of that is a full time job. And yeah. I was also trying to, you know, get good grades. So we kind of just focused on the music. So the first couple of songs weren't listened to as much because of that, because we mm -hmm. didn't really do that much. 
but I still think that we did a pretty good job with them. And those people that have heard them really love them. And mm -hmm. Sunset, and specifically, I'm always surprised because I'm a little bit self-conscious about it. Because when I sung it, my voice was much younger. It doesn't yeah. sound like my voice anymore. Um, but many, many people that discover my music now and listen through my discography name it as one of their favorites. So oh. I, I was really surprised by that. It's a very, very, very simple song, mm. but, mm. but it's, it still has something. So, yeah. <laughs> and, if, and if anybody wants to hear Sunset, for instance, where can they find it? Well, all of my songs are yeah. on all major streaming platforms. So, you know, Spotify, Apple Music, Deezer, mm -hmm. Tidal, Pandora, wh whatever, Amazon, Google Play, <laughs> YouTube. <laughs> so they're <laughs> basically everywhere. Um, you just have to type in Luna Keller and mm -hmm. you'll find them. And on YouTube, I also have some music videos. I've been yeah. putting a lot of work into them recently and I'm pretty proud of them. So you can check mm -hmm. them out there. And Sunset actually was the first music video too that we made um which is um, it's it's fun to look back on it because in that music video i still have my long hair i already mm -hmm. have my hat so you can kind of like see where i was going but i still yeah. haven't fully formed my artistic it's not a persona because it's me but who yeah. i who i am i hadn't really formed myself yet at that age so <laughs> it's it's good it's fun to watch for sure yeah yeah because because you wear a hat as well I was going to get to the hat a little bit later, but you just mentioned it. So, so is the is the hat something that you wear at your live gigs? Is it a part of? Yeah, that? like. I mean, are you, I... are you are you Luna Keller on stage, or are you like a character on stage? I am Luna Keller. Um, yeah. I realized pretty early that my music is very personal. It yeah. comes from my heart. It tells my stories, and if I want to play it, I'm going to have to open up, be vulnerable, and say, "Hey, this is me." Mm -hmm. and this is my music these are my songs these are my stories so i am myself i'm obviously a little bit more energetic than usually <laughs> but i also do have my little like quirks and little things when i started making music my dad told me hey you you need to have something to be recognizable mm -hmm. something that sets you apart so you know i started wearing mismatching socks which i already did beforehand <laughs> but i discarded that idea at a certain point and i found this hat that i really love um, and I thought about one of my my great musical inspirations is James Bay, and he also has a really cool hat. Mm -hmm. And I was like, why 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 shouldn't I have a really cool hat? Let's have a cool hat. So I started wearing it, and it kind of stuck. And I really love wearing it. I yeah. should probably wash it though. <laughs> if you only got the one. I only got the one. I need to get another one. <laughs> uh, and what kind of hat is it? It's a top hat. Top hat. And. Yeah. Yeah, I actually bought it in a carnival store. So ah, it's no rabbits. It's not found any rabbits in there. No, not no. yet. No, no. but <laughs> but yes. Yeah, so, so it is a top hat, and I, I I also bought it because I was putting together my steampunk outfit because I really like the steampunk aesthetic. Okay. But I kind of didn't. I do have the outfit now, but I use a different <laughs> hat with it. So yeah. it, I never ended up using it for that. But yeah, so so it is a top hat. Okay. Okay. Um, now, where? What was your inspirations in music? You mean like other artists? Yeah. In, yeah. In Who did you listen to and go? One day I'm going to be myself. I'm going to be. I'm going to be like that person. I don't have a single person that yeah. I was like, I'm going to be that person. Mm -hmm. um, when I started making music, my favorite band that I just adored, and I have all of their albums. I'm still a big fan. It was Coldplay. Um, so I was I really loved loved listening to Coldplay and not only that, like I, I even own like an acoustic version of some of their early songs and stuff like really big fan we saw them live and I spent half of the concert crying so they were <laughs> a huge 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 inspiration not because yeah. of them because of their music I do yeah. want to clarify that I'm not the kind of like oh my god <laughs> oh my um, Martin, yeah, sky. yeah. Uh, and what yeah. do you say to all those naysayers about Coldplay because they get a lot of hate and I think it's it's why I don't get why. I think I think I understand where they're coming from in the sense mm. that Coldplay has changed yeah. And some people say that's bad, but I actually think it's good. I don't like all of their albums the same. And actually, mm -hmm. one of their most recent ones, Adventure of, of a Lifetime, which is where I think most of the people started saying nay, because mm -hmm. it's really different and very poppy, um, was, is also one that I like less than the others. I still yeah. like it, but not mm -hmm. quite as much. 
but I don't feel like it's a reason to say nay because what they've proven is that they're fearless. Mm -hmm. They've just gone out there and said, you know, we have this style and it works, but we're still going to do whatever we want musically. And if we want to put out a pop album and tour around the world, we can do that. And if the next album is going to be, you know, an album with a jazz solo, saxophone solo on it, we're also going to do that. And I think that is amazing. And you don't have to love everything they do. Most of my favorite songs are on their earlier albums too. Mm -hmm. But I don't feel like it's very supportive to just be like, oh, they're not doing what I love anymore. So goodbye. (laughs) You know, every artist should be evolving and changing. And that's what what makes you stay with them. And some of their things are going to be more appealing to you. And some of them are going to be less appealing. And that doesn't make them a worse artist. If you can hear me, if you can hear me, Owen, that's my cat. Yes. Hello. Hello. <laughs> is it is it feeding time? <laughs> she's down here. Where is she? Oh, she's down here. Oh, she's adorable. <laughs> very demanding. Oh yeah, yeah. She's very loving. I'm doing a, I'm doing a Zoom meeting, if you don't mind. I'm not going to edit you out, okay? We've got a cat over here. Um, <laughs> so Coldplay for me, I mean, the, the song that I absolutely adore is uh, Fix You. Uh, that was the song oh, I yeah. fell in love with. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's but, uh, beautiful. Yeah. But yeah, so, so just to come back to the inspirations, Coldplay mm. was a big one when I started. But now they're actually not my favorite band anymore. Okay. Because I started doing my radio show, uh, Why Doesn't Everyone Know These Songs, where I feature indie artists. Yeah. And so many have just absolutely blown me away that at a, pr- a certain point, I just gave up. I was like, I don't have a favorite band anymore. I just have loads of people that I love and that inspire me. Mm-hmm. And also in mainstream, that has changed a lot. Like some other artists have come into the foreground of my inspiration, such as uh, Lisa Hannigan, Laura mm-hmm. Marling, some female voices that I adore. Yeah, really. yeah. Um, and other bands, very folky bands. I love the Lumineers. I love Mumford and Sons. Yeah. Um, so, so it has expanded since then. But when I really started getting into music, I was a really hardcore Coldplay fan for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? That's why I say why not. Um, why not? I mean, I, I mean, I love Elbow. You know, I can go and watch Elbow, mm. Coldplay, and, and Kaiser Great Chiefs. Band. You know, uh, that's the kind of. But they're the three bands I've seen the most, I think, um, and mm. maybe Two Door Cinema Club, but they're the main ones. Um, although, you know, my style of music, I I like to see different things. So I don't know if you heard of Sigur Ros from Iceland. I of don't think so but no. maybe in the written form i would have because mm. i'm just really bad at pronouncing right stuff. yeah <laughs> yeah it might I, I'd, I'd recommend them you might it's a very different take they, on what they do ring a bell somehow yeah. i have a, a friend who has a very good music taste and who keeps introducing me to people from yeah basically north of here <laughs> <laughs> making very weird and amazing stuff so um so i'm i might have i i think do you write it S I G U R, and then it's a new word, and then it's something mm. like R O S or something like that. Yes, Sigaros. That's okay. That's yeah, yeah. Yes, I think I've heard a song or two. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know you have as well. Um, let's touch on your theatre a little bit. How uh, do you still do theatre, or was it a very short period of your life? It wasn't a short period. I did do theatre for five years. Um, yeah. So I started with like a school play. And then I realized there was an amateur theater group um, in town mm-hmm. and I just became a part of that and they started doing like little lessons with the theater school. So I just kind of went there. We did a play a year. I would be there twice a week or once a week, depending on the year. Um, and I would just play and I absolutely loved it because mm-hmm. it was like this freedom of expression and also something that I love about music and art is that you get to be and tell stories that you are not living yourself. Yeah. So my very, very first theater role was actually, it was a, a theatrical version of, um, oh, how do you call this? Aschenputtel in German. Here we are again, Cenicienta in Spanish. And in English, it's it's that fairy tale about this girl and then she loses her shoe at the dance. And Cinderella. The Cinderella. Cinderella, that's the one. Yeah. Yes, thank you, sorry. <laughs> so it was a, a theater version of Cinderella and I was the evil stepmother. And I had so much fun on stage, like so much fun. So- And, and was this, in, did you do this in English, Spanish or? 
It was in Spanish. in Spanish. It was actually a school play that we did to get some money for uh, a, a little trip that we wanted to do as a class. Mm -hmm. But if we did it in the local theater, which is a very, yeah. very nice one. And we had a good, the school had a good relationships with theater. So they would often give it to us. Uh, so I loved that. And from there on, I just kept playing. And I like my theater um, teachers were also very encouraging and in incorporating my music. Mm -hmm. So I would actually write songs for some of the plays and play them on stage as an actress. And it was just a way, my, my first kind of experience with all of that. And it just felt really, really liberating. So I love it. You, you do something with theater too, don't you? Yeah, yeah, I've been doing it since 2011. So Panto's my thing. So the last year, I, I didn't get the chance to be in Panto, which is like, Rrr. but uh, it is what it is. Hopefully we'll get on in theatre this year, maybe. Um, oh, I hope so. I, yeah. I do miss it a little bit yeah. sometimes. <laughs> but this is this is where you got your confidence, really, to get onto stage then, as you mentioned earlier. through uh, and Yeah. Because there's quite a few people who don't do theatre and they just go in, uh, from their bedroom onto the stage and they're really quite nervous but I think theatre helps. Absolutely it, it does help a lot especially in stage presence and knowing how to you know what I learned in theatre is I can stand in that theatre mm -hmm. and I can speak on stage without a microphone and they can hear me in the back row <laughs> so that's incredibly useful without it sounding like screaming so that's incredibly useful but still it was terrifying yeah. to go out there with my own music because yeah. it's very different. In theatre, you felt like you have this protective shell of the character that you're playing. It's a character. It's not you. Mm -hmm. And it's around you. And you get to be that character on stage. Yeah. With my music, I go on stage and I'm basically like, hey, I'm going to tell you about this one time. This thing happened to me. And I'm going to yeah. play you a song about it. So I'm basically opening up my life to a room full of strangers <laughs> and laying my heart out there. And I'm still a little bit nervous before any live performance. And I, I feel like it's a very different kind of nervousness to playing theatre. Yeah, I mean, nerves are good, though. Nerves are good to have. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah they push you. Mm, yeah, yeah. Um, what was your, how many EPs have you done so far? So I have done two EPs. The first yeah. one was called First Steps, and it was just my, my first couple of songs. Mm -hmm. And, um, sorry. <clears throat> got something in my throat there um the second one is the alice is in love with the mad hatter ep yes um very long title very inconvenient for everyone but <laughs> that's what it is uh so that that's sort of a concept ep that i wrote around alice in wonderland and mm -hmm. sort of the messages that we can take from it and right now we're working it was supposed to be the third ep but i wrote too many songs so now it's going to be my album my debut album Ooh. so that's going to be called, spoiler alert, uh, Prophecies and Silver Linings. Mm -hmm. And I'll Bring You Home, A Ray of Light, Let Me Go Now, which I played before, yeah. um, Prophecy, and all the songs I'm releasing at the moment, there's going to be a new one in, I think, around six weeks, if everything goes well, yeah, um, yeah. are singles from that album. So that's, mm. that's what's on the plan right now. <laughs> maybe you could put an extra track in there of me and my elephant, maybe, who knows? <laughs> my elephant and me. I'm not sure if it fits in there, but you know what I could do? Because I'm, I'm doing a, a reprint of First Steps. Yeah. Um, it was originally only, it only had four songs on it. It was Sunset, Packing My Bags, uh, Black and Blue, and Young Love. And I'm going to do a reprint. I'm going to call it First Years, and I'm going to include all those singles, singles yeah. that I have, um, that I haven't recorded yet. And we actually talked about, well, I have recorded, I have released, but I haven't included them on a CD yeah. So it will only be physical. I won't mm -hmm. release it digitally. But I was thinking about including My Elephant and Me as a hidden track. And of course, if I do, I will send you one, a copy oh, for you. Oh, well, thank you. you. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> um, what would be your Wonderwall song? So if you go and perform uh, and people are expecting you to play this song, maybe last or, or what would be your Wonderwall song? I'll bring you home <laughs> for bring sure. Yeah. yeah, it's a sing-along song. I play mm -hmm. it at every live stream. It's so ingrained in the people. Mm -hmm. I, I, I almost struggle at saying my fans yet, but I do have some and they're amazing. So it's so ingrained in my fans' brain mm -hmm. that the other day I was doing, I'm doing a weekly Instagram live stream with different artists to kind of yeah. introduce them and chat. 
and I played I'll Bring You Home as the first song and one mm -hmm. of my fans tuned in and were like oh no the live stream is over it's I'll Bring You Home time already and I was like no 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 <laughs> I'm just playing it first so it's definitely the song that I always play at the end and it's a yeah. song that everyone wants to hear because it's also the song that has been heard the most I mean on Spotify it has over 150,000 listens which is just crazy like I can barely wrap my head around that yeah. so so yeah that would be my as you said Wonderwall song <laughs> <laughs> um now when it comes to performing uh, festivals and gigs and obviously we're all missing that right now um what's the biggest festival you've performed at? have you I'm guessing you have performed at festivals so which is the biggest mm -hmm. one you performed at I actually haven't performed at that many yet because oh, yeah. when I started doing this I was still in school so I couldn't really travel around yeah. and then when I actually started doing this full-time COVID hit so it was mm. like <laughs> yeah. not so good for festivals but I did play on one local festival and um, which was the Jazz Roja festival so yeah. I guess that was the biggest one I played and it was uh, a interesting because mm. it was a jazz festival and i did a collaboration with this flamenco jazz guitarist we wrote a song together and it was very okay. different um but i got on stage i got to open for another band and it was really really fun but mm. i hope to play more mm -hmm. i did at the moment i'm the most gigs that i've played have actually been house concerts which i yeah. were playing and i was even lucky enough to squish in a little house concert tour last year despite all the craziness so yes yes i feel very fortunate yeah, and did you have a name for that tour or? Well, to be honest, it was a little bit chaotic because I had planned to do it, Luna Summer Tour, I had planned to do it in June and yeah. then lockdown, ding, ding, nothing's yes. going to happen. So all concerts were basically cancelled and I could only postpone and save four of them. Mm -hmm. But I said, okay, I'm still going to fly out to Germany because they were all in Germany and Switzerland yeah. and I'm just going to see what happens. I'm going to play those four Worst case scenario, I get to spend a lot of time with my family. Yeah. Um, best case scenario, I end up playing concerts. And I played those four concerts and I met people there that wanted to book me for other concerts and wow. ended up playing 11 concerts in that time, including mm -hmm. the one in Zurich um, yeah. where, where you're from no, Untrue Band. I almost always forget the name. It's a little bit, I would say like No Wham Band um, <laughs> helped me organize. So, yeah. so it ended up being this wonderful adventure filled mm -hmm. with concerts and amazing people yeah. and I was just really lucky because just when I finished things got a little bit stricter again so yeah. it was like just that gap <laughs> but at least you had that little experience as a bit of a yeah warm. yeah yeah and and there was little changes to be made for safety so most of the concerts ended up being garden concerts instead yeah. of house concerts so you could kind of keep the spaces and mm -hmm. make everything safe for everyone so it was possible and since there were never more than 40 people it yeah. was kind of safe, but it was a bit weird to travel that much in those yeah. times where everyone was like, oh, I can't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> You're not well, look at me. Um, now, uh, Jörg Mag, um, of course, mm -hmm. from um, the Untrue Band, he was one of the performers who performed for part of Switzerland in the 24-hour mm -hmm. festival. You've got to meet him in real life. Um, I've only ever I spoken to him on Facebook. So what's he like as a, as a person? Oh, he's lovely. He's yeah. he's absolutely lovely. And all the band, the whole band is, is wonderful. Mm -hmm. I told him I was doing the tour and I had a date in a house concert for one of my patrons close to Zurich and Jörg lives close to Zurich. And he was like, yeah. you know what? I'm just going to write all the venues I know and see if I can organize a concert for you. Like out of the blue, we didn't know each other. <laughs> And it was just like, oh, wow, you're like the kindest person on earth. So, so of course, I said yes. And loads of, obviously, venues weren't doing anything. Mm. But we ended up managing to organize one concert in front of this cute food truck in the middle of Zurich. And he actually came into Zurich, brought his PA. So I had something to amplify because I was only playing house concerts 100% yeah. acoustic. I didn't have equipment. So he came into Zurich, brought his PA. He brought his band as audience to cheer me on and we had uh, a drink afterwards and it was just so lovely. It's really one of the most lovely people that I've ever met. So, and his music is so great too. I have a constant earworm with yeah. one of his songs. So definitely worth checking out. A big shout out here to the Untrue Band and yeah. a big thank you too, because it was so, so lovely, especially in those times where there's so many people that I've met online, actually mm -hmm. getting to meet someone in person was really cool too. 
It is, and uh, I'm hoping, uh, hopefully, I haven't asked him yet, but hopefully I'll get to uh, to do one of the podcasts with him. I think that'll be quite fascinating. Um, that would be awesome, yeah. He's a very yeah. interesting person. Yeah, yeah. He comes across that way as well, so I- I'm looking forward to that. Um, I've mentioned it once before. I'm going to mention it again, because I'd like you to explain the the the, the actual song to me, because, uh, of course, you, you did do this with, with somebody else as well uh, from the United Kingdom, Midnight Queen, the song that, Introduce mm-hmm. me to you. Explain, explain this song. Explain the song. <laughs> yeah, explain what is what it's. So, okay, if people who haven't heard it before, explain the song to the people who have not heard it. So, okay, it's it's a piano-based ballad duet sung by Eric Bay, who's mm-hmm. an amazing artist um, from the UK, and myself. And yeah. basically, what happened is he wrote me on Twitter and was like would you like to collaborate? And I had no idea who he was, but I listened to his music and I was like, okay, this is amazing. So I said, yes. And then we just kind of chatted and I had this chorus that I had written, which was, did she already go? Did she cast you in that spell just to leave you where you fell? So I only had that and -hmm. I was really stuck. I didn't know where to take it. And it had been lying on my phone for over a year at that point. So when he approached me just from his style, I said, okay, hey, um, I got this, would you like to write on this with me? And he came back with the verse immediately, which fit perfectly. And it just went kind of back and forward with voice memos and Zoom calls, Skype calls, actually, I think. And in the end, um, we had this song and he recorded the piano and sent it over and I sung my voice, he sung his voice. And it ended up being a completely remote collaboration. And it's this heartbreaking story of a woman that is deeply hurt and hurts others because mm-hmm. of that and and I think it's it's just a very interesting thing because it's the first collaboration I released and now I'm working on more of them I'm re- going to release I actually have already released one more um just to see how two different artists styles merge yeah, and we yeah. create something that we wouldn't have created by ourselves um none of us and that ends up being this amazing thing and Eric and I are really good friends now. Um, he actually started a YouTube channel, okay. which, you, which, is, which is amazing. It's a YouTube channel to teach toddlers how to say words. And he started it with his wife. Mm. And it's called Moo Cow. And Eric is, is Moo Cow. And it's amazing. I should be a bit embarrassed to say this, but I watch it. And it's, <laughs> it's made for toddlers. But I enjoy it so much that I have to watch it. <laughs> And by, by the way, Eric Bay, not related to James, by any way, is it? No, no. No, no okay. But, but so, I do confuse them sometimes when I talk about <laughs> them. <laughs> it's like my friend James, but anyway, Eric. <laughs> um, now, I've seen a couple of songs recently you've released, especially over winter with Christmas time. I think in November you released um, A Ray of Light. Am I right in saying that? I think that was a little bit earlier. A little bit earlier. Sure, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, but as I said, I don't know time anymore. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I've, I've seen something on your music page recently. Um, I think it's called Two Chord Song. Two Chord Song was on Alice. I did release Prophecy. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, which was in November. So that yeah. was that might have been November. Yeah. Yes. So that's why I think Array of Light should have been about two months before that. Mm-hmm. So I did release Prophecy, which is a super personal song about because I'm moving. So it's kind of about all of those feelings and expectations and fears um, that come with that. Mm -hmm. So I did release that in November. And in December, um, Thomas Levine, which is an amazing artist from the States, if you don't know him, you should definitely check him out. You would, I think you would really like him knowing your musical taste. Um, He wrote, he reached out while I was on tour, actually was like, hey, I've got this song and I need female vocals for it. And I ended up singing it with it, with him. And it's a beautiful song he wrote. It's called By the Coast. Mm-hmm. And that has also been released in December. So those are my most recent releases. Um, yeah. Yeah. So next up is actually another song called High Low, High Low, which I wrote while being on tour. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's probably, as I said, going to be out in six weeks. So it's, it's being mixed and mastered. So mixed yeah. right now. So depending on how long that takes we'll see well i mean we're we're all really we're on the edge of our seats waiting for new material from you luna um and is there any chance of having an exclusive play of high low high low oh because it's you 
Okay. <laughs> it's gonna be quite different on a recording because we went yeah. a little bit crazy in the studio. Mm -hmm. But I can play you the version I wrote. It was sort of just to get a little bit of, of the inspiration behind it. I I was I kind of fell into an emotional hole when my tour was cancelled. I was yeah. just really sad for for a time because it was just I was like feeling like my life is gonna start. I'm gonna tour. I'm gonna move. I'm gonna do all these things. And suddenly it's like, nope, you're not. And it's like, okay, what am I gonna do now? <laughs> so I really fell into that emotional hole. And then when I finally got to tour and I got to play, I was in Germany. I was just about to play my very first house concert in Germany. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. It does mm -hmm. work. And I just realized life goes up and down. It's high low, high low. Yes. And that's what the song is about. So. Over to you. Here you go, exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> from me and Sue the cat, who uh, absolutely adored it, didn't you, Sue? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure my, my cats are so used to, to us rehearsing. I'm always blown away because they have very sensitive ears, right? Mm. But I remember we, we actually, for some time, we were playing with a percussionist. So it was my dad on guitars, me on guitars and vocals, and a percussionist. Mm -hmm. And he would come and he would play cajon really loudly. Yeah. in our living room and my cat would just be sleeping on the chair like when he started playing she just like lift her head up look over slightly annoyed and then she like just decide it doesn't bother her and fall asleep again it's just <laughs> hilarious what a tolerance they have you always, have made, you always always made me wonder if a cat meowed over in tenerife 
does it meow in Spanish compared to my cat here in Coventry? <laughs> That's meows in English. Would they know each other's meow? <laughs> you know, cats don't usually communicate in frequencies that we hear. Mm. I read that recently. So mm. they, the only things that we can hear is their annoyed sounds, which is their meows. And oh, they're sorry, speaking sir. speaking with their <laughs> speaking with their parents sound. So for example, if they do I'm I'm gonna try to imitate my cat here, so <laughs> those kind of sounds that are yeah. like, hey mommy, I want something from you. Mm -hmm. So basically we only hear them when they say I'm a baby and when they say I'm mad. Um, it's really hard to tell if it's the same language from that. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I think they probably would understand each other just because they communicate non-verbally, mostly. <laughs> but on the other hand, I have this theory about mosquitoes. So oh, well. I think mosquitoes sound different in every country. <laughs> so here they're like very... <laughs> in Estonia, they're like... <laughs> they're like so much deeper. And, like, and in, Ita in Italy, they're like... <laughs> Like, like more interrupted it's it's very very weird so maybe cats have different languages too i don't know you gotta remember the mosquitoes in in italy they come through the window go ciao <laughs> yeah of course don't forget it's that just... <laughs> yeah oh i had so many mosquito bites when i went to italy because i went to venice and mm. venice is filled with mosquitoes really never been i'd love to go especially in summer yeah. yeah it was a we went on a trip a family trip i was mm. maybe 12 or something don't yeah. trust me because as i said time is not good <laughs> um we went with my best friend um at the time pablo who i wrote i don't know where i'm going with he's also yeah. a really good guitar player and my parents Basically, my parents and I were going to go and Pablo said, oh, I've always wanted to go to Venice. And we're like, OK, come along. So so it was really fun. And I remember we went into this house where we stayed and it was like very humid. So mm -hmm. we decided to open the windows, but it was the evening to kind of let the air in. And when we came back home from dinner, it was just filled with mosquitoes. So that night was just fighting Italian mosquitoes with Pablo <laughs> for hours. I, I will never forget it. So don't you, don't you I, get I, do you get bitten or attacked in Tenerife on the Tenerivian mosquito? Oh yeah, absolutely. And I'm, yeah. I'm. How do you say? I don't know if that expression exists in English, but there is this uh, German expression that you have sweet blood when mm -hmm. the mosquitoes bite you. Like some people get bitten more. I have yeah. sweet blood. Like if you're, if you're outside with me, I will. The mosquitoes will come to me. <laughs> I, um, my, my parents always joke, I'm the mosquito repellent because <laughs> everything <laughs> that comes to me. Um, but yeah, so, so there are mosquitoes here. Mm -hmm. It really depends on the time of the year. Yeah. Like right now it's colder, so not as much, but in summer we have quite a lot. And they bite me a lot too. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. If you're not careful. <laughs> That's why you're moving to Germany. There we go. See? Yeah, but there are mosquitoes in Germany too, <laughs> especially in summer. So Not, not as nippy though, I would, I'd imagine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I have just... been chased by a cloud of mosquitoes by the river in Germany once. I have so many mosquito stories now that yes, I think I've of it. Yes, I've noticed that. Maybe you should write one, <laughs> a song about mosquitoes. Oh, I'm pretty sure I've done that already. <laughs> I need to have a look at my songbook, but I'm sure there's somewhere. You know, one of the few sentences in Estonian that I learned to say mm -hmm. are Mavikan Saski, which is I hate mosquitoes. That was like, <laughs> I, I was there for a week and I learned to say that. So... <laughs> See, ladies and gentlemen, what more can I say? We've had German, we've had a little bit of French, we've had Spanish, we've had English and Estonian. Yeah, who'd have thought that would happen? Mm. And that's just a one Not podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Very international. Is there any other languages that, that we can just throw in there? Mm. I don't know, I did Russian for a while. Um, I can say das oh? which is which is see yeah. you soon, I believe. Um, it might do you know any be. Swiss? Um, well, they... they they speak German in Swiss, don't they? In Switzerland, don't they? I don't know. I've got no idea. Like when I was in Switzerland, they were like they they they're they're they have like a part that speaks mm. um, French, a part that speaks German, and a part that speaks Italian, I believe. Yeah, and there's yeah. Of, like a mix, and they do have a strong accent and like a dialect, but mm. I I don't speak that. No. I mean, Belgium is very much a country of three different languages, isn't it? German, um, as well, yeah. Uh, Dutch mm. and French. I don't think there is. is there a Belgium accent. I don't think there is. Is there? 
Um, well, they, they, they speak of really Fl Flandish. <laughs> um, I was in Belgium. Um, actually, during my tour, I didn't play there because they were actually a hotspot at the time, so I had to get mm -hmm. tested and be very careful. But I went there to do, to, um, do the music video yeah. for um, Prophecy. So mm -hmm. the theater that you see is actually in Brussels, the one that you see in the music video. Yeah. And in Brussels, most people speak French, like most yeah. people I, I spoke to. But it really depends. It's a country divided and it mm. has many languages. And depending on like from one town to another, you can suddenly be like, OK, the official language is another one here now. <laughs> but it's really beautiful. So, yeah. Oh, it is. Yeah. I went the to cool uh, thing is. Oh, sorry. No, I was going to say, I just went to Rotwerkte or Rotwerkte. Um, that's mm -hmm. in Belgium, um, which is a great festival. There we go. Oh, it's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I really I'm, I feel really blessed because I'm moving to Cologne. And in the like quick train, the fast train and the yeah. ICE, you actually get to Brussels in an hour and a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I've got some connections there now, some amazing people that I loved working with. And I'm really looking forward to being close by so I can yes. work with them again. Also, they've got an amazing model village if you get a chance to go there. Mm -hmm. It's like a Where little tiny in, in Brussels. Um, in Brussels, okay. When we went there, we went there for the day and it's, it shows you all these different countries but in miniature form. Really good. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's really, really yeah. good. Yeah, should check it out. Yeah, do it. That's what I said, go. <laughs> you know what? I, I'm, I'm normally good at geography, but I always thought, because it sounds kind of French, so it's, it's really bad on my part, I always thought Cologne was in France. You know, Cologne is the English word, mm. because ah. the city's actually called Köln. Right. But I think English people said, we're not going to say Köln, let's just call it Cologne. <laughs> <laughs> they also have a very famous Cologne that they yeah. sell. I should mm -hmm. probably investigate if the word Cologne has anything to do with the Cologne from Cologne, which it probably has. <laughs> but that, that's, that's something curious. Once I live there, I will mm -hmm. become an expert of the city. Yeah. I already know quite a lot. I actually did my final arts history project in school on the Cathedral mm. of Cologne. Yeah, so, yeah. So you, I mean, <laughs> I mean, you're you're still very young, twenty, twenty one, are you? Something along those lines. Uh -huh. Nineteen. Hello. Nineteen. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was trying to work on years. Uh, so you're only nineteen. You've done so much already in such a short period of time. You're very level headed. You're very positive um, and really confident as well. Always got a smile on your face. You know, that's that's what you feel at the age of nineteen. Not always, but I try. <laughs> We all have our little uh, rocks in the ships. Um, mm. don't know, don't, I've got no idea what rocks in the ships is. It's a new dialect and um, version of something that I've got no idea what I'm talking about. I'll just edit that out. No, um, we're just going to pretend that's a thing. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. start using that very casually and it's going to end up being used by everyone. <laughs> I was meant to say rocking ship or something. I don't know what I was talking about. <laughs> uh, I just want to find my duck. I'll, I'll edit this bit out. There is a reason why. It will scare the cat, so uh, it is one of those. But I do okay. a what, yeah, you know, I do a what the duck question. Uh, yeah. Okay, I'm Get a little bit scared now. <laughs> <laughs> She's asleep. Uh, right, where was we? Uh, back on track. I was going to ask you a question. We oh, were yes. rocks and ships. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll skip that bit. <laughs> So you've done a lot uh, uh, as a as a very young person that you are, nineteen, mm -hmm. of course. Um, Say, give give us something that nobody knows about you, something that you've done that nobody will know. Define nobody, because if you include my parents, they well, know apart, pretty apart much from, everything. Apart <laughs> from family and friend, uh, and close friends, the the music world who uh, who know you as Luna Keller, the musician, and maybe the theat theatrical person, is there something that you do or something that you um, uh, as a, as a hobby mm -hmm. that nobody would know? Well, I've, I've mentioned quite a lot of my life over yeah. time. It's, it's hard. It's a hard one. Um, I don't think I have told the world what my favorite book is. Oh, what's your favorite book? Um, it's Dead Poets Society. Fantastic book and movie. Yes, it's my late... favorite book and my favorite movie. <laughs> yes, the late great Robin Williams. Absolutely. Yeah. My favorite actor. Now, now that we're speaking about favorite things. <laughs> so I'm, I'm pretty sure I have not mentioned that. Yeah. Well, one thing I probably haven't mentioned is, and that is, is something I really love. Mm -hmm. I collect playing cards. Okay. There we go. Yeah, I, I wanted to do magic. 
um, mm -hmm. then I realized that requires practice. And I also want to learn how to play the guitar. So I had to prioritize. So I ended up collecting playing cards instead of just doing cardistry or magic. And I have mm -hmm. some very nice decks, not super expensive, but just mm -hmm. very nice magic decks with little trick cards and stuff that I just enjoy having a look at. And, you know, we've even used some of those decks as mm -hmm. percussion on two chord song. We actually did some percussion with decks, but <laughs> But yeah, I, I don't think I've ever actually talked about my playing card collection. So there you go. So how many playing card collections have you got then? I think I have around 20 decks. I don't have that many yet, um, but they're all very special and all have their own story. I, mm -hmm. I mostly support the way I do it. Some decks I obviously buy at magic shops when I get there. There yeah. isn't one on the island. Um, but I like supporting Kickstarters. There's amazing playing card designers, mm -hmm. indie playing card designers too, that just create these stories. The, my most recent edition is called Vivaldi Playing Cards. Mm -hmm. And it's this deck inspired by Vivaldi, the composer, and yeah. each of the pips is one of the four seasons. And all of the people are playing the violin on the images. It's a stunning deck. So I, I just support those little creators on Kickstarter when I can. I have stopped at the moment because not being able to play live has taken a toll on my my income. So yeah. I'm I'm if I'm spending money at the moment, it's on albums of other indie artists to support them. <laughs> so I've kind of switched my collection temporarily. But yeah, I I love them, and I do hope that when I get a little bit more money, I can mm -hmm. support more campaigns because it's just so pretty. It's a work of art that's useful. Mm. And there is a community around it that is also very lovely. And, and also um, it's kind of a little backdoor to the magic community. <laughs> and, and when you go to other countries, do you go and get yourself a, a deck of cards? Is it that kind of thing? Or, or when you go to much. different places? I mean, many places have like a touristy deck of cards, right? Mm. Um, like I have, I have from Ireland, I have like a Dublin Doors deck and I also have a, a Guinness. If we, if we count those decks, I have <laughs> over 50 decks. Ah. But what I, what I, those are more like fun little things. But the ones that I really collect are actually just magic decks, cardistry decks and collector's decks. So actual mm -hmm. ones um, printed to be used for magic or really yeah. designed by an artist with a very unique concept. And not many people know that exists, mm. but it's it's really beautiful. And there are some creators out there that are just amazing. I'm looking at my little vitrine with playing cards right now. So um, it's it's an interesting little world. <laughs> and are they all the same amount when, when it comes to the deck? To every card it depends. the same? Uh -huh. Usually you have 52 cards, right? Just yeah. like in any normal deck. But then there's always jokers. And depending on the card, you'll have gaff cards. So you might have a card that has a blank face or that has a double backer where you have like mm -hmm. the back side on both sides. And some decks come with specially prepared cards that you can use for magic tricks. Yeah. Like maybe you have a queen that's holding in her hand on the painting a seven of hearts. So you can do a magic trick and you can be, is this your card? And you're going to be like, no, that's the queen. And you look, look what the queen is holding. Like those little things that, that are in some decks that are super, super cool. So, so yeah, so sometimes those cards will be separate because you will still have a normal queen. Yeah. So sometimes the decks will have one or two cards more because of that. Um, but so mostly when, it's normal amount of cards. So when you're allowed, when you're allowed to go out and do a tour, I reckon what you should do is a 52-date tour. Call it the, I don't know, either the Queen of Hearts tour or maybe the deck of, the deck of cards and top hat tour. And maybe you could put <laughs> a, a throw in a magic trick. I mean, that's something a little bit different that people won't see. That was super funny. I actually met a really nice magician called Thomas and in one of my concerts. It was a house concert and he mm -hmm. did a little bit of magic before my concert. And he said, we should do something together. You should write a song for a magic trick and we should do something together. So, so I already have a connection where I could do something like that. <laughs> who knows? Who knows? Um, it I would know be a magician over here. concept for sure. Yeah. No, I know. Okay, yeah. maybe Same. I can partner up with a different musician, uh, with a different magician in every country. Hey. That would be very unique, wouldn't it? Cool <laughs> I know, idea. Very cool. Um, <laughs> and who's your favorite magician? That's a question I've never asked. Oh, uh, hard one. I'm a big fan of Piff the Magic Dragon. Piff the Magic I don't Dragon. Know if, yeah, with his <laughs> with his little dog, and I, I think it's just hilarious magic. Um, but it's really hard to pick out a favorite because there's mm. so many 
fascinating magicians yeah. out there. I do. I actually am watching the masterclass by Penn and Teller right now, and Penn I think they're absolutely brilliant. Mm -hmm. So, so I really, really adore them. But it's uh, yes, <laughs> Shin Lim is amazing. It's really, really hard. Um, mm. There are too many good musicians out there, but. The one that's made me laugh the most and that I actually follow the most is probably Piff the Magic Dragon, the Magic Dragon. which is, yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, there's a guy who, um, I, I don't know who he was. He was on one of the Penn and Teller, you've got to kind of dupe them shows. Mm -hmm. And he, he did a card trick, but with cheese. Did you ever see him? Oh, I think I've seen that. Yeah. yeah. It's really surreal. But it's really good what he how he finished it. Mm -hmm. But um, but yeah. I just thought um, I'd I've that. watched all seasons of Penn and Teller of mm -hmm. Um yeah. There has been so much. It's so original. Yeah. Um, magic on there. I really like. That's also brought me. I, I follow some magicians who are also YouTubers that I really yeah. really enjoy. So I really love Wes Barker. He actually mm -hmm. fooled Penn and Teller with a trick with phone books. Uh, so he's amazing. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I also follow Chris Ramsey. He's also a really really cool guy. See, there was a guy who went on the Fallless, who did fall, if I remember rightly, and he wasn't a magician. He was um, worked in the casinos and he was blind. Do you remember seeing him? Mm, yes, I did see that a very long time ago. It's yeah. just like, how did he do that? I mean, he's blind. He's, you know, incredible. It's crazy. And the things mm. that have been there, I remember, you know, I, I'm always impressed by quick change acts anyway, because mm. just amazing. But yeah. there was one, I think she was a French woman, and she went on full and she wasn't doing quick change. She was doing magic because she literally pointed at a dress and suddenly it was on her body. And it was like, how did she do that? There's so <laughs> many amazing things. And, you know, that's what I find fascinating. Magic is all about reinventing yourself and creating something and astounding people. Mm. And it has it has such a beauty to it. I will yeah. always be a fan of it for sure. Just like your music. Aww, thank you. <laughs> um, now, I'm only going to squeak the duck once because I don't want to scare the cat. So um, this is the what the <coughs> question. Now, I woke her up. Um, and the reason behind the what the <coughs> question is that I give you a question which has got nothing to do with what we've been talking about. OK, it's got okay. nothing to do with it. But although I say that, we are backtracking slightly on something we mentioned briefly earlier. So here's the question. Luna. Mm -hmm. What animal would you be if you were reincarnated? Who? It's a tricky one. Hmm. If I could choose, I would probably be a cat with a loving family so I could just lay around and chill. Hopefully someone who doesn't have a rubber duck and scares me with it. Um, <laughs> but being a bird would be pretty cool. I'd probably mm. be a raven. Yeah. Or being a raven would be cool. I like the sounds they make. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, Saw a raven today. They're enormous birds as well, but um, but I mean, my cat just lays about. It doesn't it doesn't go out. I don't think she's ever seen a raven. Never mind anything else. But, but that's uh, what I mean. Like being a cat would be cool, but it would be boring after a while. Being a yeah. raven would probably be cooler because you can actually fly around and see things and eat some worms. You know, yeah. you're, you're engaging. Yeah, and they strut, and they're really clever birds as well. Really clever, mm. Man, great brains, Absolutely, and they strut yeah. around like security guards as well. Like they own the field. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. There you go. They're really <laughs> cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, see, I'm giving you all these ideas. Or maybe you could just do an, an alphabetical animal kind of album where you've just got animals. So you've it's got actually <laughs> really funny because I'm I was recording a song, a demo of a song that we might include on the album mm -hmm. earlier today. The song is called "Deer in the Headlights," and it's got a reference to one of my favorite songs, um, mm. which is "The Raven That Refused to Sing" by Stephen Wilson. Yeah. So it just made me think of that. It's <laughs> it's a really, really good song. <laughs> so what has the future got for Luna? Well, hopefully mm. a lot of good things. <laughs> um, I'm obviously hoping to release that album. Well, we're hoping. Yeah. I'm going to release that album this year, yeah. um, which is what I'm working on right now. And then I've actually finished writing my next album already, too. Oh, I'm fine. looking to work on that with another producer once I move to Germany. So mm -hmm. it will probably be quite different from what I'm doing at the moment. And I'm quite excited about it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the move to Germany, obviously a very big one. 
um, which is super exciting, just moving away and, and really going there. And the cool thing is there I have some contacts. I'm going to start playing live more because here on the island, the reason I haven't played festivals and that much is because here on the island, you have like two festivals, you know, it's a small island and you have to take the plane to somewhere um, to play another festival. So it's really hard to get that going. When I'm in Germany, I'm going to be able to jump on a train and be in a different country in an hour. So it's yeah. quite a different thing. So I'm really looking forward to the liberty that that will bring. Hopefully I get to play some festivals, so it's of house concerts and more mm. things live. I might even get a license to busk in Cologne because that's where I started in Ireland. Yeah. I busked a lot and I would love to get back to that. So that's in store. I'm mm -hmm. also working on my radio show that's going to continue um, being broadcasted. Sadly, the station I started with, TR1 Radio, um, mm. closed down recently. Mm -hmm absolutely wonderful station but i'm still with different stations and i got an offer from a local station um that's not only online um so i've got an offer for them to play my show which Fantastic. i'm really thrilled about so it's mm -hmm. qfm and i'm going to have my show on there from the next one on so that's something i will obviously keep on working on too because i love it doing yeah. the radio show and introducing other indie artists um to a broader audience I'm working on a lot. I'm, I've started mm. to write for music blogs too, because I wanted okay. to expand on my music journalism part. So now I'm, I'm writing a weekly review on Indie Music Center, which is called mm -hmm. Artist Pick, where I just kind of introduce my favorite finds. Um, so that's another thing. I could keep talking for a very long time. I'm also <laughs> launching an event called the Songwriting Circle, because I love collaborating and writing mm -hmm. with other musicians. And I realized at the moment we can't really do those conferences where you network and meet. Yeah. So we're creating a virtual place. It's a cool platform where you actually have like tables and you can choose who to sit down with. So like a virtual songwriting cafe where songwriters from all over the world can meet mm. once a week and can collaborate. So I'm, I'm working on launching that event. We actually have our first test open day on the 11th of February. So I'm working pretty intensely on that right now and I'm quite excited about that. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to stop talking, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm just realizing I'm, I'm quite a busy person, am I? You are. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I, miss, I miss radio as well. I really do at the moment. Um, mm. Now, my last question, okay, before I ask you to finish off with a song. Oh, and it's, I think I think it's I think it's a difficult question. This it might be, it might not be. Oh, you're scaring what's, me. <laughs> what if there is? What's the difference with music in Germany, Spain, and England? Can, is there? I mean, with the exception of language, is there a difference in music? Um, yes, absolutely. Mm. Um, the difference is culture, yeah. <laughs> of course. I mean, you know, Spain has a culture that's very close to also Latin rhythms and Latin mm -hmm. music. So you will hear a lot of that here influencing music. But there are all the regular genres. And thanks to globalization, everyone is influenced by everyone. So you will have yeah. Spanish rock bands that kind of sound like English rock bands. So it's not about generalizing, but there definitely is something that influences music more here mm. and in germany you will have other influences um yeah. in the charts not really because mm -hmm. pop music has sadly grown a little bit boring and everyone is just copying what works constantly so there's not that much of uniqueness in there yeah not not generalizing there are great songs in the charts but mm -hmm. just like par partially happening and then uh, what was I saying? Yes. And then there is a difference just from from the language. You know, you said except languages, but singing in a different language makes you write in a different way. Like yeah. the songs that I write in, in a different language. So that is also there. So, yeah, there is a difference. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, the core of music is universal. So, yeah. you know, the core of what moves you and the chords and stuff that's being used is universal. It's just that culturally you will have different influences and different sounds predominating mm -hmm. from one country to another yeah, one yeah and it's and it's nice that you mentioned culture there because 2021 is uh, coventry's city of culture and mm -hmm. uh, of course we have that beautiful peaceful link with coventry and germany uh with dresden of course and and and, and there is a few other twins and coventry's twinned with more cities around the world than any, mm -hmm. any other city and it's nice that you know i'm from england you're from germany we're talking here positive smiley smiley faces yeah 
Uh, so maybe with the city of culture and if the world is open f- for us to allow, maybe I can say, hey, I know somebody who uh, kind of connects in England and Germany together and maybe she could come over and perform. Hey, not maybe. I mean, that would be amazing. You've been opening so many doors for me, which I'm so grateful for, both with the Elephant Song being played mm-hmm. on BBC and with the connection to York. You know, you've really been creating a platform and connecting artists and pushing artists forward which is so amazing. So thank mm. you so much. And I am one who says no far too little, which I've just proven by saying all of the things that I'm working on right now, but I would absolutely love playing in Coventry and, mm-hmm. and not be speaking to you through a screen, <laughs> actually be there in person. Um, I, you know, I, I found out saying no doesn't always work. Say yes as many times as it can. And my way around that was by watching a Jim Carrey film called Yes Man. Silly as it oh, sounds. that one's hilarious. Yeah. I mean, there is a balance. That's mm. something that I've really learned in 2020. Nothing's black or white, yeah. you know, um, and you can't say you always need to say yes. or You always need to say no. Mm-hmm. Um, you have to actually find a balance, say yes to the things that make sense, yeah. to the things that push you forward, even if they're a little bit scary, but mm-hmm. also no to say no when you're overwhelmed or when something isn't for you. Yeah. And yeah. I had to learn that. I mean, when I was... I, I got to a point in school where I was doing four sports and theater plus school and I didn't have a single free day because I was just constantly saying yes. And I crashed there. I was like, okay, I don't have energy to, to breathe anymore. <laughs> Let's stop. Um, and I had to learn to say no. And I think that's also very important. So yeah. balance. Yeah. yeah. Balance. Yeah. Get the scales right. Um, exactly. Now, Luna, um, I'm going I'm to ask you, uh, you to play from one of your EPs. Um, um, and the one I'm going to ask is because we've we've had kind of a really nice conversation, but it's been a bit wacky in places, a little bit, a little bit kind of gone off kilter slightly, talking about mosquitoes. And, so that makes me think: Could you play a song from your uh, Alice in Wonderland EP? Yes, and I think I'm going to play Alice is in Love with the Mad Hatter because it's a title <laughs> song, and it is about something that I think you're doing really well. <laughs> which is embracing your inner child and allowing <laughs> allowing yourself to be happy and to be yourself fearlessly. Um, <laughs> it takes the metaphor of Alice yeah. and the Mad Hatter. So I'm going to dedicate it to you today. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Alice is in love with the Mad Hatter, do you know? They're from two worlds and absolutely mad. But being crazy isn't always bad. Alice is in love with the Mad Hatter that you know The Red Queen got the news yesterday And now they're running far away They're one step away from reality They know how to count an infinity They're the craziest couple in history And they know How to build up a castle with their dreams How to move down the walls and be free They rely on each other them be just as crazy as they should be just as mad as we all are when we are in love can't you see nothing can stop their victory the war is over mad love beats hate and logic who needs logic alice is in love with the mad hatter do you know they brought warmth into a cold world Changed it all with a single word. Alice is in love with the Mad Hatter, that you know? They build up their own universe between a chorus and a verse. You need verse to do 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 do. poems without a rhyme they're an infinity with limited time and they know they don't have a thing to fear they're far away but right here they make sadness disappear with their love so let them be just as crazy as they should be just as mad as we all are when we are in love can't you see Stop their victory. The war is so far. Mad love beats hate and logic. Who needs logic? Alice is in 
was amazing you are amazing um and everything about you is amazing so <laughs> let's let's hope that i get to see you on your 52 uh, date tour of your oh, yeah. deck of cards and top hat tour okay but here here's my condition you have okay. to learn a magic trick and perform as an opener for me <laughs> i better get working on that one then <laughs> Um, thank you very much, Luna, for um, spending your Sunday evening with me. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, it's been and... lovely. Thank you for having me. No, by all means. And um, this was one of the ones I couldn't wait for because I knew you had an amazing story for such a short <laughs> life so far. Uh, um, I'll, I'll, if I get the chance to do a podcast in 10 years' time, I'd imagine the stories will be uh, quite astonishing. You'll be on the big I'm stage. I'm working on a collection. I'm quite a collector. <laughs> <laughs> But your card collection will be quite big by that point as well, I reckon. <laughs> so thank Hopefully. you very much. <laughs> thank you so much. You are thank amazing you. too. I don't oh. want to sound cheesy here, but I really mean it. It's been so lovely to connect and to, to forge this friendship with you. And yeah. I'm really grateful for this lovely evening and this lovely conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Festival Meets. That was Luna Keller. And we'll see her on stage very soon. Bye-bye.